The Queen has ordered senior palace aides to plan a legal fight back amid hurtful attacks by Harry and Meghan, declaring, enough is enough. The monarchy's legal team is consulting libel experts after a barrage of criticism from the US-based couple. Last night a well-placed source revealed the Queen, 95, has become exasperated with repeated attacks. They said, the feeling, coming right from the top, is that enough is enough. There is a limit to how much will be accepted and the Queen and royal family can only be pushed so far. They are getting lawyered up. Harry and Meghan will be made aware and no repeated attacks will not be tolerated. The royal family was rocked last month by Harry's revelation he was writing a tell-all memoir to be released next year, the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. A legal warning to publishers Penguin Random House is now being considered. Our source went on, the royals' legal team are speaking to firms with expertise in libel and privacy. If someone were named in the book and accused of something directly that could be a libel and also infringe their rights to a private family life. It would be ironic if Harry and Meghan were accused of breaching privacy given their pronouncements on the subject. The legal team could also contact publishers of the book to ask for advance warning of its contents and a right to reply. There are concerns that the American public are falling for what Harry and Meghan say. Harry, 36, and Meghan, 40, told Oprah Winfrey earlier this year in a bombshell interview that an unnamed royal had raised concerns over their son Archie's skin color. An updated chapter of their biography by Omid Scobie this week also accuses the royals of failing to own their part in the fallout. Harry's talks with brother William and dad Charles were leaked this year to US TV host Gail King, a pal of the Sussexes. Meghan and Harry call in lawyers amid finding freedom reissue. The Battle of Agincourt started with a volley of arrows fired by the depleted English forces, while Napoleon's forces kicked off Battle of Waterloo just before lunchtime, rude, no? With an artillery bombardment. This week, after a period of unusual peace and quiet on the royal front, skirmishes resumed with lawyers being called in after a new report in the American Weekly, which has resurrected the face-off between Harry and Meghan the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and Buckingham Palace over claims of royal racism. On August 31, which will also be the 24th anniversary of Diana, Princess of Wales' death, the updated edition of the firmly pro-Sussex biography Finding Freedom is set to be released. Hence, Omid Scobie, one of the title's authors is back on the PR hustings. Audiences got their first taste of what fresh PR misery might be in store for the palace's courtiers courtesy of this week's People cover story which features an interview with Scobie. In the piece, he alleges that Harry and Meghan had felt that Her Majesty had failed to take full ownership of the racism allegations they had raised during their primetime outpouring. Scobie and co-author Carolyn Durand, per People, write in the new edition of Freedom, the Queen's recollections may very comment did not go unnoticed by the couple, who a close source said were not surprised that full ownership was not taken. They quote a pal of Meghan as saying, months later and little accountability has been taken. How can you move forward with that? Hear that sound? That's the bandage being ripped off the still raw wound that is the racism allegations Meghan has previously leveled at the palace. To be clear here, it is not the Sussexes themselves reopening this particular Pandora's box. Last year when the book was first released, the couple denied they had contributed to it. As part of Meghan's privacy lawsuit against the Mail on Sunday, lawyers acting for the Duchess listed a series of incorrect details in Freedom. However, also during the same case it emerged that on one occasion she had passed on information via an intermediary, to the authors to prevent any further misrepresentation. Yesterday, lawyers acting for Harry and Meghan swung back into action, those two sure keep their legal team in billable hours don't they? Distancing the couple from Scobie's new claims and threatening legal action should any media outlet suggest they had reignited a rift with the Queen. As a source told the Daily Beast overnight, they've created this issue themselves. As they talk to Scobie, they've made him their unofficial spokesman so people buy into him. Looking beyond all of this, what is clear is that this people story, and the coming global campaign to shift copies of freedom, will see the Sussexes damaging claims about their treatment by the palace resuscitated in the press and brought back to the fore. And this, in turn, will only serve to remind the world of just how inept and deeply inadequate Buckingham Palace's response on the racism charge has been, and continues to be. The Queen asserted that Meghan's claims would be dealt with privately but is that good enough for a sovereign who presides over a commonwealth, the majority of whose population are people of color? While earlier this year it was revealed that Buckingham Palace was considering hiring a diversity czar there has been no announcement made on this front. In June, the annual Sovereign Grant Report, for the first time, 
revealed that only 8.5% of royal staffers are from ethnic minorities, with one source saying we can do better. Does this cut the English mustard? Far, far from it. A poll done several weeks after the Oprah interview found nearly 43% of non-white Britons thought the royal family was racist, as opposed to only 27% who thought they were not. The same poll of ethnic minority voters found that on the question of whether the UK should keep the monarchy, the yes vote only just squeaked over the line with 43% as opposed to 40% in the no camp. The royal family have an enormous amount of ground to cover on this issue, ground that they have so far taken no public steps to try to make it up. This people story, and whatever other new morsels are released to try and tempt the book-buying masses, will only reinforce how holy at sea the monarchy is right now when it comes to addressing the questions of race raised by the Duke and Duchess. Give courtiers a toe-sucking scandal or some suggestion of some sort of murky financial skullduggery or a Windsor who just been caught without their pants in Vegas and it's par for the course. Get out the pro forma press release Gerald, there's a good chap. But when it comes to facing, head-on, the very serious allegations that Harry and Meghan have brought up, the palace has unequivocally failed. The only HRH to directly come out and directly respond to Harry and Meghan's claims was Prince William who firmly told the press days after the interview saying that the royal family is very much not racist. 